Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Vivor 14 inch. This is the concrete cutoff saw or cutting saw. Handheld chop saw. It's like $170 or something, $180. This is their, you know, this is a cheap alternative to one of those gas powered steels or which are, you know, thousand bucks or something. But that's essentially what it is. It's kind of like a weekend warrior version. Uh, when you don't want to spend the money buying or even renting one of those uh, gas saws because they can be pretty expensive. It is heavy. Let me do a quick unboxing here. Versus all the complaints about that mag drill, part of it was just a horrible packaging. Heavy tool and just thin, uh, thin box with thin styrofoam. Surprisingly enough, this 14 inch saw, I don't know if they changed the way it is, or it's, I don't know if they changed anything due to the feedback about that, or if it just happens to be with the saw. But this thing is like night and day. This is a double wall cardboard box, or three layers of paper, two layers of corrugation. Does Here's the blade, which is actually in a pretty decent box and a bag. It is a cheap blade, but nonetheless, 14 inch diamond blades, even Chinese ones are still kind of pricey. Anyway, there's the blade, pretty solid. And surprisingly enough, the saw, the saw itself is also in a double wall box. And instead of styrofoam, it's using closed cell foam, which is like an exponentially better packing material because it doesn't break apart and it actually rebounds. And then this is how they pack it. Just a ton of stuff in there. There's the handle. Here's the guard in bubble wrap. This is just packaged. It's night and day compared to that mag drill. Has some funky stuff going on with the paint, but you know, it's a $170 14 inch saw. Big long hose, super thin vinyl hose for the, um, for the pump. We've got a bag of goodies, including two valves, which is a little bit interesting, plus uh, a T fitting some bolts, allen wrenches, screws, manual. These are including some stuff. What do we got here? We've got some kind of rubber booty thing. I think this is a like a finger to deflect some of the debris coming off the guard. We've got this box, which includes a little pump, 12 volts, 2 amps, 24 watts. Just a cheesy little uh, DC motor pump. I would hope that it's submersible, but you would just dump this into the container, blast it out the little nozzle there. And then finally, we have the saw, which I'll admit is pretty heavy. You need to be need to have some solidity. Does come with the shoe pre-installed. Yeah, some grease licked out of the gearbox, but at least there is grease. Really wide flanges. Do like that.
you saw the cut and the rest of the video because I kind of did it in pieces I have screws in here when I was going out to make that cut I uh, I didn't drop it but I banged it on the handle and it like broke the little tab on the l rotating handle lock button so then the handle is spinning around there's nothing I could do so I just put four screws on all the different and these four recesses just to super stubby screws just to lock the handle down so that was the big disappointment is that little button another thing is on the website it says 15 amps this thing is heavy i mean it's real heavy uh there's just so much mass and gears on the front end of this thing to gear it down 3500 rpm so you're safe for you also not just using diamond blades which it does come with that's probably one of the advantages is for 170 bucks even though it's uh you know cheesy chinese nonetheless it is a diamond grit concrete blade. It does come with one, which is a big, big deal. Those things are expensive. For me, I'm more going to use it with these, one of these metal cutoff discs. When you're using an electric tool, uh, Norton makes these thinner instead of eighth inch. This is three thirty seconds of an inch thick. So this is a thin kerf blade. So it should prevent it from bogging down at all. You just have to be super careful because it's super easy to break one of these thin kerf blades. But that's the distinct advantage. I do need to get the guard on it. I did attach this finger. Three little screws. They probably should have included little nuts to help prevent these screws from wanting to back out. But that's something that can be resolved later. Other than that, you know, just a basic guard. One thing I was noticing is I couldn't figure out why it came with two nozzles. It came with two nozzles and a splitter. And the actual splitter is, I'll have to give them credit for this, is the fact that for when you're doing concrete cutting, it isn't just water, it's not only water cooled, or uh, I guess that would be water cooling, it also helps remove grit, but I'll give them credit for uh, at least being smart enough to include two different nozzles, so it's putting water on the edge of the blade and the side of the blade at the same time, so getting really good coverage. I do worry about it. People have commented not on this, but also on similar brands of how these pop breakers and on Vever's, you know, Vever's website, they're constantly misquoting some of their tools. And this is another one. And it may have started out as a 15 amp. People may have had too many problems burning it up. But we can see on the label, this is rated at 18 amps. And that's a lot of amps, especially considering. And this is also something that puzzled me here is this power cord come on camera 14 gauge on an 18 amp tool that's thin it really should have a 12 gauge power cord and if you're going to use an extension cord with it it should be a 10 gauge extension cord 18 amps is a heck of a lot of power it does have a soft start we'll do that again One more time. And yes, as a wet saw, it does have a GFCI with a little red indicator light. So at least, you know, for the most part, for what you're paying for, this is seems like you're getting, you know, it's a much more reasonable than that mag drill that I had reviewed earlier. Yeah, that thing sucked. Take a quick look at how big these brushes on it are on an 18 amp tool two screws holding the brush cover on pretty thick brush cover uh, as far as 18 amps uh, I believe that's true because they have a quite a thick wire that certainly seems like a 12 gauge uh, internal wire the power cord is too thin for this tool straight up if it's gonna have a meltdown I suspect it's gonna be the power cord first if we look at this brush this these are pretty thick these are embedded copper wires into the brush for additional conductivity and there's two of them. They use a clock spring. And if you look at the size of my finger, compared to that brush, that brush is three quarters of an inch wide. It is a huge brush. There is a huge motor. The commutator on the motor is massive. Really hard to see, but the diameter of that commutator is probably one and a half inches. It is huge. Kind of hard to see, but it is indeed welded contacts. And you can see the white stuff. So the 
field windings where a lot of the grit's going to be coming in around the back of the motor uh, is indeed has additional protection because it is going to be, you know, it's for cutting concrete. Initially, I thought the venting was just here and a little bit here, but it actually is kind of designed like an angle grinder. They have a whole bunch of venting right along here where it's all exiting around the blade to try to create, prevent debris from getting in there. They do have a big shielding washer back here. What that does is that just provides an additional convolution to reduce the amount of grit that's getting into the primary bearing. Take a look at the gears. So that was an effort. I can tell you what, if you ever have to replace the bearings on this thing, if you keep it long enough to do it, it's going to be a bear. Fitting the fitment is super tight. You really had to walk that top, this top of the case off real carefully. That bearing looks like it has HNBR seals on the back of the spindle. Then we have a pretty large, let me see what size that is, 6301. Surprisingly enough, it's using rubber sealed bearings inside the gearbox, which seems a little bit strange since that's actually not really necessary because it's already a sealed and greased environment. Just using lithium grease. So I'll add just a touch, not much, but just a touch of extra grease. This gear is also pressed. There's going to be another, there is another ball bearing. If it's a needle bearing, this thing will just pop right out. Instead, it's stuck. There's another ball bearing down the bottom. But to tell you the truth, um, as far as pulling this gear out, I mean, that's going to be, it's going to be effectively uh, near impossible. I mean, really, what you're going to have to do is drill a small hole right in the middle of this area here. That way you can use a punch and actually... <laughs> hammer out this bevel gear. Did want to mention here that unlike my experience with Viver's mag drill, the spindle in this is actually pretty straight. It's actually the washers, the machining. Kind of hard to demonstrate. Come on now trying to show you right down there so you can see that when I move the blade there's just no wobble whatsoever after looking at the gearbox I did want to look in the handle they have these wires kind of pre-twisted and I understand that they actually have a stop so the handle can only rotate 270 degrees you can either rotate to the left center you know to the left center and to the right so that prevents you from just spinning it all the way around and pulling out the wires the wires are indeed uh, 12, it looks like they are 12 gauge. Internally, they just use a 14 gauge power cord, which is just uh, totally bonkers. Super hard with the, no space on this table. Let me zoom in a whole bunch more. This I find a bit cheesy. See what's going on with the wires right there? They have like a sense wire. This big box right here is the electronics. That is the uh, soft start. And they've got like two wires put together and they just kind of yam, yam them up. Well, I just lost that spring. I'll have to find a replacement. Anyway, and they didn't really get it seated in there very well. You can see that. It's all just kind of jammed up. So I do not like that at all. But at least they're using the simple Phillips head uh, screw, so it is pretty easy to tighten it down. As far as the rating, yeah, that's interesting. They're rating it the switch at 16 amps, even though they have 18 on the label. So there's definitely some funkiness going on with the power electronics in here. So that's the one thing to be aware of the big 14 inches. You've got to have a solid 20 amp dedicated circuit to really cut you know if you're cutting you know thick concrete cutting a trench through your driveway or you know who, whatever with average four inch thick concrete um this thing would be great for you're just going to make sure you need a lot of you have this the circuit that can drive it and one other recommendation is under having cutting i would probably recommend upgrading um really just buy like a 12 gauge extension cord and cut off one end and use it to rewire this uh, because the 14 gauge cord on an 18 amp tool is a bit thin 
at least they haven't 14 inch 14 inch blades are really common because uh there are hot saws known as metal cutoff saws they're pretty common dewalt milwaukee they all make them and 14 inch is like the standard so that was the big deal is that i could just take blades that i already had for my dewalt cutoff uh abrasive 14 inch abrasive cutoff saw and just use it with this tool and that dewalt only has a 15 amp motor but even reviews on it, these 14 inch blade tools just require a lot of current. I mean, it just takes a lot of power to spin a wheel that big. So anyway, once again, compared to the mag drill, this is actually for whatever the 180 bucks that Beaver is charging for it. It's actually much more decent. You know, the, the foot is just basic, not great. The well, spot welds aren't great on the guard, but at least it's straight. And for what you're getting, it's actually a much more viable tool. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.